Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 152 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And I'm Lucy. What? We have a guest a, on we, the show today. We, we have a guest in the studio with us today, and we'll, we'll get to her in a little bit. I just want to let you know what's happening in today's show. We'll be playing an exciting and fun round of Would You Rather... We've got some news about pop singer and vegan Ariana Grande in our noteworthy segment. We'll get to all that after we tell you all the fun things we've been up to. So those of you who have been listening to the show for the last almost, gosh, we're coming up on three years. We're coming up on three. That's yep. just crazy. I know. Okay, so any of you who have been listening from the beginning or who have, you know, kind of invested in our back catalog, know that at the end of each summer, our niece, Lucy, comes to stay with us for a week or two while she attends a theater camp here in Fredonia. That's right. And so she joined us just over a week ago. And so last week, why don't don't you tell us, Luce, what was going on at Playground last week? Well, last week we performed Anastasia, which was super fun. And then this week we're performing Descendants. Yes. Yeah. And Lucy had her audition today and got the role of... Evie. Evie. We have any Descendants fans out there. Descendants is... It's a Disney creation. And the Descendants are children of Disney villains. It's kind of a cool concept. It's a really great concept, actually. I think it's pretty phenomenal yeah. um, in its conception. And so, yes. So Evie is the daughter of the evil queen from Snow White. And I believe in the story they call her Grinhilda or something along those lines. Yes, yeah, so, something like that. Yeah, something that's her like name, that. Grinhilda. Yeah. Grinhilda. Yeah. Okay. The only one that we discovered does not have an actual name is the fairy godmother. Yeah, we did a little research because all of the other evil queens and sorcerers and Wait, sorceresses. What'd you call me? Oh, never mind. Oh, we already know you're an evil queen. <laughs> It's not a surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but all of the others have first names. They have given names yeah. that we're not always aware of. But it seems that the fairy godmother does not. She's nameless. She is simply the fairy godmother. Crazy. Yeah, it looks like looks like Lucy's going to fact check us here. So looks like she's doing a little Google foo. No, thumbs up, thumbs up. We are correct. Well, but anyway, yes. yesterday we took Lucy to um, Hot Topic. That was fun. To basically descendants her up. So the Descendants movies have a little bit of a semi-futuristic, like vastly technicolor, like yeah. almost punk yeah. aesthetic. The, yeah, kind of punk aesthetic. Yeah. Sure. And so we went to Hot Topic to get Lucy some kind of punky clothes to, to get her into the role for yeah. the audition. Yeah. And so what would you think of that, Luce? It was so fun. I think you guys had more fun than I did. <laughs> I think, but I think was, we did too. It was still really, really fun. And then we went bowling right after. So that was fun. Too. That was a blast. And Lucy won one game and I won one game. Yes. And oddly enough, I tied with the person who didn't win the game each time. In both games. Yeah. So when Lucy won, I tied with Christine for second. And when Christine won... Yeah. I tied with Lucy for a second. And every time we go bowling, I don't know if you are bowlers out there, but every time we go bowling, we're like, this is so much fun. Why don't we bowl more often? It's so true. We do. Yeah. It's a good time. It really is. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, we are going to go bowling again sometime soon because <laughs> yeah. I had a blast. <laughs> it's exciting stuff. <laughs> it is. We don't get out much. Remember, we don't get out much. Yeah, so we, bowling is exciting. We don't. Yeah. So uh, theater camp will be going along this week. And Lucy is stuck here with us vegans. And I just wanted to ask her what she thinks of the food we've been giving her because she's been eating vegan right along with us. Well, I come here every year. So usually it's like about the same foods that I'm <laughs> used to. But oddly, like everything that we like, that you serve me tastes very similar to non-vegan food. So oh, that's it's pretty good. good. Great. Yeah. And we do stick to it. kind of a, a a set rotation of meals because, um, Lucy, are, are you a picky eater at all? I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. where's the lie? She's, yes, Lucy is a bit of a picky eater. She's incredibly adventurous in some ways. Like she will ride any roller coaster you put her on, but she's not very adventurous when it comes to food. So we know that she likes vegan chicken nuggets. We know that she likes spaghetti with vegan meatballs. We know that she likes having a taco Tuesday. Yeah. We know pizza is good. So um, she also likes a particular Uncle Ben's rice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we go with all the things that we know that she likes. Yeah. And then hopefully as as she gets older and perhaps more adventurous, we'll introduce her to new things. Yeah. She did eat broccoli today. I mean, she it's not did. like she's not getting any vegetables. We don't want people out there to think we're just giving you nothing, you know, no vegetables. <laughs> I really don't think anybody would think that. <laughs> anyway. But the broccoli was very good today. Yeah. So that's what we've been up to. We don't have a recipe of the week. Nope. So we're just going to hop right in to our noteworthy section, which is uh, Ariana Grande's family always forgets that she's vegan. And according to her... Or at least the way, from her perspective, she feels that they don't want to remember (laughs) that she is vegan. Yeah, Ariana Grande says her family always offers me meatballs, even though I'm vegan, they don't want to remember. And this comes from the hard-hitting news source of People magazine. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) Ariana Grande is opening up about the difficult parts of being vegan. The Grammy-winning artist is on the latest episode of the YouTube series Hot Ones. Although host Sean Evans ate vegan wings alongside Grande, she revealed that her family isn't always as accommodating of her diet. Evans asked Grande whether she had discovered, quote, the perfect Venn diagram between her plant-based diet and her Sicilian-American family's cooking. No, it's so funny because my family always forgets, the dangerous woman singer replied, before quickly correcting herself. I don't think they forget. I think they don't want to remember. Grande also added that her grandmother is one of the people in her family who has the hardest time remembering that she doesn't eat meat. My nonna always offers me meatballs, and I'm like, no, thank you. I'm still plant-based, the singer added in a sweet voice. But Grande, whose seventh studio album, Eternal Sunshine, released on March 8th, isn't the only person in her family with a dietary restriction. Her brother Frankie Grande's husband, Hale Leon, who joined the family in 2022 after their wedding, is also plant-based, she said. I'm not alone. My brother-in-law Hale is vegan, so we have each other, Grande said. Trying to navigate those Sunday night dinners, Evans added. The episode of Hot Ones, which is titled Ariana Grande Hits a High Note While Eating Spicy Wings, also featured some hilarious reactions from the break-free artist as she worked her way through increasingly spicy hot wings. Grande ended up handling her spice pretty well, which was a surprise. At the beginning of the show, she told Evans that she wasn't entering the interview with high expectations, and she noted later on that she brought bananas Tums and popsicles for herself, just in case. By the way, I'm not coming in proud or cocky or confident, she told Evans. I'm shriveling and weak and honest. You came prepared, you handled it, Evans said after Grande ate the spiciest wing, seemingly unfazed. While Grande described a fermented kimchi sauce as having romantic notes, she admitted that she didn't love most of the hot sauces she tried during the interview, including one that she called disgusting. When Evans noticed her making a face after eating one of the wings, Grande explained why. My face changed because I think I'm learning that I don't like hot sauce, she jokingly replied. Grande will star as Glinda the Good Witch in a film adaptation of the musical Wicked set to release this November. She told Evans about some of her favorite parts of making music, including working with her friend and producer Max Martin and her love for looping machines. So there you have it. Pop yeah. star, vegan, Ariana Grande. Yeah, I think Ariana Grande is funny. She is funny. Anytime I see her. And if you subscribe to our newsletter, I included a video of her on Jimmy Fallon, where she's doing the wheel of music, oh, musical. I love that segment when he does it. Yeah, the wheel of musical impressions is yes. the segment, and she she nails other people's vocals like spot on. Yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah. 
So if you're not subscribed to our newsletter and you'd like to get more fun stuff like that, go to our website, CompassionAndCucumbers.com, and put your email in there and subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Absolutely. So thank you, people, for that. Indeed. That was fun. Hard I hitting. like that today is a fun episode. Well, yeah, I figured we'd keep it light. We've been doing some heavy topics, you know, and Lucy's here. And so this is kind of like um, Compassion and Cucumbers, teen edition. Exactly. And actually, the <laughs> would you rather questions that we are going to be addressing are actually coming from an issue of Teen Vogue. And that segue will bring us to our main topic. That's right. Now, this article, we've got 275 would you rather questions that reveal a lot about you. And we'll be reading every one of them. We really won't. <laughs> I just have to say, I don't know if you listen very closely in probably the last two minutes, you might hear Lucy's eyes roll. <laughs> Especially when I said Tina did. <laughs> it must run in the family. <laughs> The audible eye roll. I seem to get the Kenny eye roll frequently. Number one, would you rather have smelly feet or bad breath? You have to pick one. Smelly feet for sure. I feel like I'm obviously you're talking to people every day, so I don't want to have bad breath. No, I'm, I'm also going with smelly feet. <laughs> I yeah I because guess. I mean smelly feet you can hide them in socks and shoes <laughs> right you know bad breath it's just gonna be right out there yeah. yeah I guess it's unanimous I guess I'll have to have smelly feet myself okay smelly feet it is okay <laughs> some of these are really weird <laughs> okay would you rather only watch one single movie for the rest of your life or only eat the same food for the rest of your life oh I think I'd pick movie really. And what movie would that be? Well, I don't know. That's hard because my favorite movie is Scream, but I don't know if I'd want to watch that. Like, Every that, like that's my day. only movie I can ever watch. So I, I have no idea. Yeah, you'd have to pick the movie very carefully. You really would. You know what? I'm going to say only eat the same food. Really? And that same food is salad. Because you can make salad a lot of different ways, and it's still a salad. I suppose so. I so suppose I know so. I'm probably getting around this on a technicality. Yeah. But I, I think I'm going to say food and go with salad. I'm going movie. And what movie would you pick? Uh, Moonstruck. I really shouldn't have had to ask that. Yeah. That's an it's obvious It's my favorite one. movie. I could watch yes. it every day. Yeah. 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 Nice. All right, Sam, you're up. I'm up. Let's see. Would you rather have a photographic memory or perfect pitch? I'm going with photographic memory, like for, for tests and stuff. <laughs> or for lines. Oh, yeah, that, right? that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, also, I think I'm going with photographic memory to be able to just instantly remember anything I've ever read. Yeah. Gosh, I would love that. You almost have that. No, I, I do have a very strong memory, but it's not anywhere near photographic. Yeah. I'm also going with memory, and I'll add in that Lucy already has perfect pitch. So. She really does. Yeah. Oh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm up. Let's see. All right. Would you rather be on a dating show or a survival show? Most definitely survival. I... Being on a dating show, I really think, would be the cringiest experience <laughs> possible. Like, I, no, I just can't. So I would, I would, I would be that person on alone who like checks out after day three. Uh, okay. You on, know, on the survival show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know that I would check out after day three. We'd have to see how it goes, but I would definitely yeah. rather do a survival show than a dating show. No question. Okay. Lucy? Well, like Sam said, it would be so extremely cringy, but I think I would pick dating show only because I just like, I can't picture myself on a survival show. Like I, I would be so bad. Like I can see it now. It would be so bad. You wouldn't survive. <laughs> no, I would not survive. Well, and also you like watching dating shows. Oh, they're so entertaining. 
<laughs> yeah, she's a fan of the Love is Blind. Um, Go watch Love is Blind on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Not sponsored by Love is Blind. No. <laughs> I'm going to go... I'm going to go dating show just because you're inside with all the food you need and, and all all the uh, liquid you need. That's a great point. Too. I will put up with the cringiness of it all just so that I don't have to be out in the wilderness somewhere trying to survive. That is some good logic right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm holding my ground. I'm still going survival. I mean, show. on those dating shows, they, they put you up in these really cushy places and stuff. So, you yeah, know, but. But but dating, ew. Well, you could be bad at it. You can be bad at the dating and still enjoy your time there. <laughs> like, really? I could, like, refuse to go on dates? No, you can go on them and just be, you know, not a good date. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound particularly fun I would go either. on a dating show and just be like, um, I'm just here for the food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this needs to happen. This would be so funny. <laughs> Okay. All right. I think, uh, Lucy, you're up. Yeah. What the heck are these questions? <laughs> okay. Know. I'm going to go with the weirdest one I could find, which is, oh, good. would you rather have your hands stuck in a jar or get your head stuck in a bucket? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the one I was chuckling at, actually. Would you um, rather have your hand stuck in a jar or your head stuck in a bucket? I'm going to go with hand in the jar. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Especially if I can pick the hand. Like, if it can be my left hand, definitely hand in jar. I don't want my head stuck in a bucket. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to go with hand in jar too. But Lucy, what if it's a jar of pickles? Oh. Oh. <laughs> burn. That was not the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. Yeah, I'm going hand in jar because, yeah, don't want my head stuck in a bucket. It doesn't say how long. Yeah. It just says, you know, stuck. So, yeah, I guess we're unanimous there. Would you rather live on a boat or in a treehouse? I feel like a treehouse, like I've seen some pretty cool treehouses, like on the internet or on YouTube or something. So I would pick that. I feel like it's also just more shelter in general. Yeah, I'm going treehouse also. I'm also going treehouse. Now, the reason I picked that is because Christine has both a fear of heights, which could make a treehouse tricky. It could be a low treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> and a fear, a of, fear open of open water, <laughs> which makes a boat tricky. <laughs> and you know, I've been on boats, though. I've been on boats on the ocean, and I was fine. It's just like me alone in open water I don't like. Well, that makes sense. I don't yeah. know if anybody really likes to and be it doesn't alone say that in the, open water. It doesn't say that the boat is in the water. It doesn't. So you could be a docked boat, a dry docked boat. A very nice, could be a yacht. I'm going yacht. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I could live on like a cruise, like that didn't go That didn't anywhere, go anywhere. <laughs> that would be great. You know, I would hate that. that didn't go I would anywhere. hate that because the only point of the cruise, I don't actually enjoy the cruising part. I just like going places. Yeah. I'm up. Would you rather spend a Friday night out with little Nas X? Or Miley Cyrus. Uh, I would pick Miley Cyrus. Can I choose to stay home? <laughs> <laughs> that is not an option. You have to pick Little Nas X or Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus was Hannah Montana. I'm aware. I was just never into Hannah Montana. I was too old for Han for Hannah Montana. You know. I mean, I I'm opting to stay home. <laughs> okay well you're out <laughs> you're out of the game you're out of the game oh, no, no, I, no. I too am going with miley cyrus um i just feel like i would get in trouble with little nas x you know i just i think he would probably get us into some sort of trouble well I mean, at the club or you, something you do have that magnet on the fridge that says that's a terrible idea what time what time <laughs> <laughs> i'm going miley yeah and i'm just I'm just staying home. Okay, fine. Okay. Be that way. Would you rather go a year without desserts or have to eat a spoonful of wasabi every day? I almost picked that one. I'm going a year without desserts. I, I can definitely go a year without desserts. I'm also going desserts, even though I'm not happy about it, but I would still do that. <laughs> it's still better than a spoonful of, a spoonful yeah, of that's wasabi. Disgusting. That's painful. 
Yeah, and the thing is, I like wasabi, but I don't even think... By the spoonful? Well, but the question <laughs> is, do I have to eat the entire spoonful at once, or can I spread it out during the day? Look. Sam is trying to rig the question. I know. You've already stayed home during the last question. <laughs> now you're trying to spread your wasabi out throughout the day. Oh, I no. Am. You have to take the spoonful at once. Okay. Well, I, I honestly think that that's too much for any human being to handle. So I will yeah. also go with the year with no dessert. And I will also be unhappy about it. Oh, that sounds like a children's book. The year without dessert? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we might have to come up with that. <laughs> also, with Sam, like, changing her answers, I feel like that could, like, almost mean the question's, like, go a year without dessert, but you can spread out through your whole life, like, 365 days of no dessert oh. throughout your entire life. You know what I mean? Right. Clever. It doesn't, it doesn't have to Very be nice. a year consecutively. If we're rigging the system, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, is it mine? It is. Would you rather be chased through the forest by a zombie or be chased by a lion? I mean, probably zombie. I I don't know how fast they are, but I'm guessing they're slower than lions. They seem slow, right? Yeah, I haven't really seen any zombies move super fast. No. Whenever they're represented in film or television. So I'm going zombie. I too am going zombie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could take a lion. No, you definitely could. No, there's no way. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm definitely going zombie. I used to have these this recurring dream that there was a lion in the house and like nobody else noticed it. Like I would like be in the kitchen and I would go around the corner and he would be like stalking me coming down the hall and I'd be trying to convince everybody else in the house that there's a lion in the house but nobody else would pay attention to me. I'm sure a therapist would have a a good time with that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Hmm. That's new information. I did not know about this dream. Too much information? No, this I was said it's new when I was young. When I was younger, I used to have it. Yeah. Not like a child, but like maybe like a teenager age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Lucy, you're up. All right. Would you rather have breakfast for dinner or dinner for breakfast? Definitely I'm, breakfast for dinner. <laughs> bre- I am breakfast for dinner all day. Yeah. I'm going to go dinner for breakfast. Just to be different. No, not just to be different, because really what I would prefer to have is lunch for breakfast. (laughs) No, I'm serious. And I know they're both shaking their heads over here, but I'm serious. Well, because that's not one of the options. I know, but that's why I'm going dinner for breakfast, because that's closer to what I would actually Sam frequently has lunch for breakfast. Like she would rather have, you know, like a tofurkey sandwich. Yes, I really would. I'm, I'm not really a big breakfast person yeah. every now and again we'll make breakfast sandwiches which i like a lot and to me that kind of encompasses both right it's like breakfast it is kind of lunch. like lunch yeah, yeah it yeah. feels like lunch yeah or every now and again we'll do a, a breakfast burrito with a tofu scramble and so that also kind of leans towards lunch but yeah i'm just <laughs> not a big breakfast person lucy's losing it over there what i feel like i feel like this website should say like the would you rather blah, 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 or blah, 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 or whatever Sam wants to add <laughs> to the list of questions. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh-huh. Oh, this is coming to us from Teen Vogue, by the way. I don't think we mentioned that. We did. Would you rather be the smartest or the funniest person in the room? I feel like that's the hardest one we've had. That is hard. I think I'd rather be funniest. They say, whoever they are, they say, you know, nobody likes a smarty pants. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go with funny, too. I'm also going funniest. You're going funniest? I am. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I would much rather be funny than smart. Well, you're already smart, so. Yeah, but I'm I'm very rarely the smartest person in the room. Me neither. I don't think it's ever happened to me once. Um, no, there are, <laughs> there are, generally speaking, other people who are very, very bright in yeah. the rooms that I'm in. So I never feel like I'm the smartest person in the room. But... I would aspire to be the funniest person in the room, which I'm usually not that either. And I'm okay with that. That's but you're good. going funniest? So it's unanimous? Going, it's unanimous. We're funniest. all funniest? Yes. Okay. Ooh, here's a good one. Would you rather everything you doodle becomes real or be able to read people's minds? Oh, definitely the doodle becomes a real thing. I do not want to know what people are thinking. I think that would... Honestly, sometimes, I mean, sometimes that would be cool, but other times I feel like it would be, like, like too much, you know? 
I completely agree. I mean, I don't really doodle, so it means. Well, no, I'm serious. I'm I'm answering the question. I'm not asking for anything to be added. I'm not asking okay. for a different answer. I'm just saying I don't doodle. Let's so let's pretend. I'm going to pick do. the doodling. Okay. Yes, I'm going to pick the doodling. Because, no, I wouldn't want to know what everybody thinks. That's way too much information. Yeah, we just have to, you know, suspend reality and imagine that you do doodle. Do, do, doodle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am also going doodle. Because, yeah, I don't think it's good to know what people are thinking. There's a reason why we can't read each other's minds. Mm-hmm. Even if I um, wanted to know, like, even if I wanted to read people's minds, I yeah. feel like doodling anything is, like, a really good so power. Cool. Like, oh my God, I need a new car. I'll just doodle one. Exactly. There you go. You It'd know? probably be a pretty weird looking car, <laughs> but still. You have to work really hard on it. Yeah. I mean, it's a doodle, so you're not supposed to spend a lot of time. Yeah. But, you know, you want a popsicle? Just doodle a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have to sleep for 15 hours a day or only be able to sleep two hours a night? I don't like this one. It would be bad, but I'm going two hours a night of sleep. Yeah, I think I'm with you, Lucy. Um, I don't want to waste 15 hours of my day sleeping. You know, I would rather be perpetually tired. (laughs) I mean, we could, like, use that time, like, obviously, like, most of it in the time when we would be sleeping. But still, that's a long time to be asleep. 15 hours. That's a long time. Yeah. I mean, the two hours a night, that would catch up with you after a while. But It really would. I mean, and that's where I... Of course, like my question becomes, well, do we sleep two hours a night and feel rested? Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. So if the answer to that question is no, (laughs) why are you two laughing at me? Because I'm actually thinking about the question. (laughs) Because you're always putting conditions. I'm not. That's usually my job when we do these. I'm the one usually putting conditions on the question. It's true. But if I'm not going to feel rested after two hours of sleep, which I know in real life I would not ever, yeah, I might have to go for the 15 hours a day because I'd be useless Yeah, during my waking hours does, if I only slept for two hours. Does that mean the 15 hours have to be during the day? Because it says 15 hours a day, not a night. Well, I think it means 15 hours within each 24 hours. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I might change my answer. Even though 15 hours is a lot, a lot it's of time. It's a lot. It's a lot of time. Yeah. Um, but wow, you'd be really well rested. You'd also have a very short amount of time in the day to get things done. So Yeah. So neither yeah. of these things are ideal. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't like either one of them. I'm going to abstain. That's fair. <laughs> no. No, I'm going 15. I'm going 15. I've changed my answer, which that is allowed. Wait, let's go to the judges. Yep. Yep. It's allowed. Would you rather have only cake or only pie as your forever birthday dessert? I do like some pies, but I'm going cake. Any specific kind of cake? Chocolate. Chocolate cake, preferably with the peanut butter chocolate frosting. Okay. Or a chocolate coffee frosting. Okay. Duly noted. I like pie more than cake, but I'm still going to go with cake because... I have cake every year on my birthday, like a specific one, like a ice cream cake. Yeah. That's really, really good. That's like better than most cakes because I'm not the biggest cake fan. So I'm going with cake, even though pie is a little better in my opinion. Well, sure, because, you know, you can have pie on any other day. It's just this is your special birthday Yeah, it's thing. not saying that you can't have pie. Yeah. Other days. Sam? I'm going cake. Ooh, we're all cake. Yes. Okay. Definitely going cake. A specific cake? Not necessarily. It would probably have some raspberry involved. Yeah. Whether chocolate raspberry or that lemon was with raspberry. chocolate or lemon or but there would definitely be raspberry involved. Okay. Okay, this is the last one we're gonna do each. Would you rather wear heels at the beach or wear sandals at a muddy outdoor music festival? Sandals at a muddy outdoor music festival, without question. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I guess me too. Um, I don't like wearing heels at all. And at the beach? Why at the beach? That would be Seriously, terrible. that would just be painful. <laughs> it would be terrible. Absolutely painful. As much as I hate having my feet be muddy, yeah. uh, I guess I am going to have to go with sandals at a muddy music festival. Yeah, I, I liked 
heels when I was younger because I liked that feeling of being really tall. Yeah. But I can't do it anymore. Yeah. No. No good. So sandals at a muddy music festival. Okay. Would you rather publish a best-selling book or direct an Oscar-winning movie? I'm going to go with the movie. And why are you going with the movie? Well, I really like writing, but I'm just not much of a book person, so I don't think it makes much sense. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Oscar-winning movie, because also like directing just sounds really fun. Cool. I'm going to go with best-selling book. I'm going movie also. Okay. Yeah. And why is that? Um, just because I think it would be more fun. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, writing a best-selling book, is, uh, that'd be cool and all, but it's a it's kind of a solo experience, mm-hmm. right? So, like Lucy said, I think directing a film would be a fun experience. Yeah. So. I get it. Yeah. Cool. I would direct The New Moonstruck. <laughs> <laughs> well, but why would you do A New Moonstruck when the old one's perfect? I know. I know. If I could get the same cast to come back. Moonstruck 2. Struck again. <laughs> <laughs> this is our last one. Mm-hmm. Make it a good one. Would you rather have a tiny home with a big yard or garden or a big house but no outdoor space? I want outdoor space. I guess I'm going to have to go tiny home. Definitely. Yeah. I just think back to the hide. In Donegal, where we had this yeah. tiny house, but there was just this incredible expanse of land in every direction. Yeah. Um, mountain views, hearing sheep bleeding outside, and yeah. it was a tiny, tiny little space. But we were so cozy and comfortable there, and just the outdoor space was so beautiful Yeah, that I think I would rather have that. I do want outdoor space. That's the thing. What do you think, Luz? I don't know. I Wait, do you mean like one of those like tiny, tiny homes or just like a smaller than average house? I don't know. It says tiny home. Huh. I don't know. It doesn't say tiny, tiny. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but a tiny home. I might go bigger house. I don't want to live in like, you know, like a huge like mansion or something right. or like a huge house or anything, but... I mean, if there's, like, parks and stuff near me for outdoor that's stuff, true. then that's, that's I would true. probably pick the bigger house just because I, I feel like I have a lot of, like, unnecessary stuff just lying around <laughs> that I would need, need a little bigger, Yeah, you I need guess, room house. for your, all your unnecessary stuff. And that is that Thus for endeth. the would you rather, but we have a bonus. We do. We have a bonus because Lucy requested that we at least do one Am I the Ass Hat. <laughs> So we're going to do one uh, Reddit Am I the Ass Hat question, and we can all chime in with our thoughts on it. This comes from user Fakey Namey. Would I be the ass hat if I rescinded my offer to pay for a friend's birthday dinner after they picked somewhere I can't eat? My friend Luke is turning 40, and I offered to pay for him and a group of our friends to have dinner anywhere Luke wanted. Luke knows I've been vegan since my 20s, and it's never been an issue before. When I asked where he made reservations, he said a local barbecue place that is famous here for having a menu that mocks people who don't eat meat. Like, literally has a section that says, vegetarian options don't let the door hit you on your way out. I asked what he expected me to eat, and he got huffy and said, well, it's his birthday, so it shouldn't matter. I should eat before getting there and just order drinks while everyone else eats dinner and still enjoy everyone's company, etc. This sounds miserable to me. I had zero expectations of Luke picking somewhere vegan-friendly. Hell, I expected him to pick a steakhouse, and I would have been fine with a salad and some sides. I didn't expect him to choose somewhere that prides themselves on meat being in every single dish on the menu. I want to tell him never mind and buy him a traditional birthday gift instead, but feel like a massive asshat for taking back my offer. I don't know what to do, to be honest. Edited to add, this is a group of nine, so I'm also feeling miffed about spending $300 plus on a meal I can't eat. Second edit. 
the exact text I sent said this. Hey, hey, I want to take you and the friend fam out to dinner for your birthday. Make a reservation somewhere and let me know. So do we think that fakey namey would be the asshat if he rescinds the offer to pay for this meal? I don't. I also don't. Yeah, I don't think so either because I think... Because I can, I can see where they're both coming from, but usually when, like, we all go out to dinner somewhere, we, like, me and my dad will check first if there's, you know, vegan options for yeah. you guys. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just a little odd to s- say to your friend who is paying for everybody, you're not going to eat anything there. Yeah. And that, you know, you can you can just have drinks and eat before. I just think it's a, and that's a little strange. Yeah, I mean... I- Yeah, why would he pick a place that openly mocks vegans and vegetarians? It's almost as if he's, like, kind of jabbing at the guy who's willing to pay for nine people to celebrate his birthday. Yeah, it's exceptionally inconsiderate of someone who has offered to pay for a group of nine people to go to dinner. Yeah. Because no matter where you go, that's not going to be cheap. No, no, not at all. I mean, nine people at McDonald's isn't cheap anymore yeah Yeah. so i i do feel like the the birthday person luke luke pardon me yeah so the birthday boy is being exceptionally inconsiderate to his longtime friend who has offered to pay for a birthday dinner the least he could do is make sure that there's something that his very generous vegan friend can't eat yeah it's very selfish and let's let's bear in mind that luke is turning 40 and this is very adolescent of him to insist on eating at a place where not only are there no options but that they blatantly mock people who don't eat meat and can we please note that the adolescent in the room is ferociously nodding her head up and down (laughs) at this being adolescent yes so let's just say i think we're in agreement here that luke is the ass hat in this situation. Yes. Right? Yes. I think Fakey Namey did a really wonderful, generous thing by offering to take a group of nine friends to dinner mm-hmm. to celebrate one of their birthdays. I yeah. think that's great. Wow. It's um, really nice. Really it's generous. really nice. It's fantastic. I think a really generous gesture was made and it was returned with just ass hattery. Massive amounts of ass hattery here. Yes, but not on the part of the author. No, on the part of Luke. For sure. Yeah. Luke, thou art the asshat. I wish there was a follow-up. Yeah. You know, but there's not. I'd like to know how that actually played out because that post was from six months ago. Yeah. So I would really love to know what actually transpired. Yeah, me too. And that's it for our main topic. We're going to move on to our assignment restaurant, SOS. This one kind of hurts. Oh, this one's genuinely heartbreaking. Yeah, we we got a um, private message from listener Stacy Loeb who told us that she saw a post made by Modern Love Brooklyn in New York that said that they were struggling and their post actually read, uh, Friends, please come and see us soon. We have had a rough summer and are struggling to keep the doors open. We could use the support to con- continue to serve you. Now, we went to Modern Love when we went to New York back in February, and we had a wonderful meal from start to finish. It was absolutely beautiful. We are huge fans of Issa Chandra Moskowitz, and like this place is just a wonderful, like, real life iteration of all of the things that you know we see come out of her cookbooks. Yeah, the food is fantastic. The atmosphere is great. The staff was friendly and knowledgeable about the menu and yeah if you are anywhere near brooklyn new york please support modern love brooklyn they're at 317 union avenue in brooklyn new york and they're open 5 to 10 during the week and 11 30 to 10 on weekends so they're also open late into the evening so it's a great place to go like after a show or something um so please support them and let's take a look at their menu to see uh if you do manage to get to modern love what you might want to order. I can tell you we had the Brussels aioli, which is the first thing on their appetizer menu, and it was 
fantastic. I have never had Brussels sprouts this good. No, neither have I. And actually, when we got them, Christine was actually like, why don't I make Brussels sprouts like this? Yeah. <laughs> because we do roasted Brussels sprouts a lot, particularly Frequently. particularly in the fall and winter. Mm-hmm. And so this was just a completely different take. Um, still simple and incredibly flavorful, but it just added, the, I mean, the garlic aioli and the lemon and the arugula just kind of added something that we've never brought to Brussels sprouts ourselves. Yeah, there was this kind of creamy factor along with the like crispiness of the roasted Brussels. It was just, it was fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And you know what I'm a little bit sad that we didn't get when What's we were that? there are the lentil sweet potato samosas. I know, right? Flaky phyllo, curried lentils with sweet potatoes, pickled bread onion, apricot chutney, and cilantro. That like, sounds really good. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a lot of your standard fare. They have nachos. They have buffalo wings, fried mozzarella. Uh, they have some great salads. They have a kale Caesar salad, a strawberry beet and feta salad, and a wonderful Greek salad. Yep. And their sandwiches are really good. I had, what did I have? I you had, I had the, the eggplant chick- parmesan. Is that what I... Yeah, it's a chickpea. It's a chickpea parmesan hero. Oh, the hero. chickpea parmesan hero. Yeah, yep. so it's a house-made chickpea patty with a marinara sauce and a cashew mozzarella. It's so good. They put a pesto and arugula and a pepita parmesan on there. It's really, really good. And I had something that is not on their current menu. There's a different version of it, but I had their acorn squash curry. Oh, yeah, that's right. And right now they have on their menu the patty pan squash curry, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit different. So this is going to be roasted summer squash, coconut milk, zucchini fritters, cashew cucumber raita. Are you kidding me with this? A cherry tomato chutney, Aleppo pepper, jasmine brown rice, and cilantro, and you can add avocado to it. Yeah, of course, the menu changes seasonally. Seasonally, so. yes. So, you know, mine was more of a winter vegetable yeah. squash curry as opposed to this, but it was absolutely divine, and I can't recommend it more highly. Yeah. They have wonderful drinks. Um, they have an entire brunch menu, so they do a brunch on Sundays, and yeah, just... We cannot say enough good things about Modern Love, and the fact that they are struggling blows my mind. Likewise. Like I said, it's just, it's heartbreaking that a place this good should be struggling. Yeah. It's it's just amazing to me. Yeah, and that's why we're doing this. Um, Unfortunately, a couple of the restaurants that we've highlighted have already closed. Fern's Diner, we were talking about in Colorado, just recently announced that they're closing. It's just, it's so sad. And these are businesses that have been up and running for, you know, many, many years. And then just after the COVID pandemic, it's just been so hard for them to come back because people are so used to staying home now. And, you know, with the economy, the way it is, people don't have as much Expendable yeah, income. as much expendable yep. income to go out and eat. So, I mean, it's hard for small businesses all over, but vegan restaurants in particular are struggling terribly. So if you have a favorite vegan restaurant, please send it to us so we can shout them out. And please be sure to support them as much as you possibly can. Absolutely. Hey, that brings us to our favorite portion of the show. Must be listener shout out time. It's listener shout out. Just want to give a shout out to all my fans watching. I love you guys. I love you. This week's listener shout out goes to Fran Old. Fran answered the call that we put out for more shout outs. Thank you, Fran. We were out of shout outs. And if you belong to our mailing list, you received a desperate email from me a few days ago. Fran was one of the people that reached out. That's so cool. Fran hails from the UK and has been vegan for four years. Uh, She and her partner recently attended the vegan camp out for the first time. I've got to say life goals right there. I really want to do vegan camp out someday. They said the food was wonderful, as were the speakers that included Earthling Ed Winters and Dr. Michael Greger, two of my favorites out there. Fran looks forward to the show each week and wants us to keep up the good work. We will do our best, Fran. I promise. Thanks so much for listening, Fran. And please send us your T-shirt size and address, and we will send you a Compassion and Cucumber swag bag. You can text us that information using the link in our show notes. Please include your name, or you can email us at CompassionandCucumbers at gmail.com. DM us on Instagram or private message us on Facebook. 
And for the rest of you out there, we are looking for more shout outs. So bring them on. If you would like a listener shout out, please email or DM us. Let us know what you think of the show and tell us a little bit about yourself. You can also nominate someone else for a shout out. Your favorite vegan or wannabe vegan or non-vegan, just someone you love. Yeah, you want us to tell somebody happy birthday or happy anniversary, anything like that, feel free to send us that information and we'll definitely shout somebody out for you. And don't forget that a shout out enters you into our Meeson Chef Knife giveaway later this year. It's time for our Vegan Org of the Week. This week's Vegan Org of the Week is the Non-Human Rights Project. The NHRP is the only civil rights organization in the United States dedicated solely to securing rights for non-human animals. Their groundbreaking work challenges an archaic, unjust legal status quo that views and treats all non-human animals as legal things with no rights. As with human rights, non-human rights are based on fundamental values and principles of justice, such as liberty, autonomy, equality, and fairness. To learn more about their work, go to nonhumanrights.org. And just like that, it's time to wrap this up. Remember, we always ask that you please join the Agriculture Fairness Alliance's Vegan Voter Hub, and we always provide a link to it at the bottom of our show notes. And subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Leave us a rating and a review. And don't forget, you can text us using the link at the top of our show notes. Text us show ideas, recipes, cookbook recommendations, or anything you want to text us. And don't forget to include your name. And with that, it's time to sign off. You have just listened to episode 152 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. And there's nothing left to say but where cukes and compassion are always the fashion. On On the the podcast. podcast. Thanks, James. Have a great week, everyone. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. We love you. We really do. Bye-bye. The end. If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, well, you can do that by hopping on over to our Patreon page and becoming a patron. We have all the recipes from our Vegan Kitchen series up there, and we'll be adding some patron-only episodes in the near future. So thank you for supporting us at whatever level that you choose, and thank you again for listening to Compassion and Cucumbers podcast.